Hey, so is retirement good or bad for your health? So one of the things that's been happening in the Strong Healthy Women community is that I've had one of our ladies come into the Stronger Core, Stronger Body Challenge and they said, we've just retired so it's time for me to focus on myself and what I need from a health and a fitness perspective. So I absolutely love that she is doing something, she's taken action like straight away that she's retired. But then one of the other things that I noticed was one of our ladies in our FitFlex community, she is absolutely giving it everything that she has in her workouts. And I really, really had noticed how she had upped the level on her game. And so I reached out and I, and I said to her, I, I just want to say, like, you're a rock star, absolute rock star. So what's happening like is is has something changed in your life do you have have you gone and set some goals you know like what's going on so what's motivating you to to really give it everything that you have when you do these workouts not that you weren't giving it everything you had in the past but you can just see how she's taken that next level up and it was really interesting because she emailed me back and she said like I've retired and so now what's happened is I've become more aware that I'm not moving as much so I'm less active than what I was and so what it did was it made me think about how I needed to reactivate some goals that I had including my fitness it was really really important to me so it's inspired her to buy a bike and what's happened is that she wants to get out and explore the the beautiful parks and the areas that are around her on her bike and so another one that i absolutely love because you know what she's done is she's gone okay i've retired now i am less active so what am i going to do about it like i know i need to set goals and so setting goals, you know, particularly when you write them down, you're 42% more likely to achieve them. And I can see that in these ladies who have stepped up and gone, I've retired. What am I going to do now? So what are some of the things that can happen when you retire? Well, firstly, there's lots of emotions associated with it because you could be really, really excited about this new stage in your life, you know, but you could also be feeling like you're losing something, that there is something there that you no longer have in your life. And so it's really important for you to just take like a few minutes, maybe even longer, just to come to terms with those emotions and I think there's a lot of yin and yang in this so you could be feeling really really great about it but you could also feel really sad about it as well too and so tapping into those emotions is really important and giving yourself um, the time it takes to understand how you might be feeling so I know for um, Paul you know, one of the things, um, you know, he could have retired years and years ago now, but he doesn't because he loves what he does. And so he just, he keeps doing it because it gives him that purpose, that something to do. And I think that's really, really important is that we have some type of purpose in life. Otherwise, what can happen is we can just get into these mundane routines and life can feel a little bit lackluster for us so you know when we go into that retirement stage and one of the emotions that we have is is that excitement it can be very much like holidays you know how when you go on holidays you're super excited and then when you when you get home from holidays you've you've got that letdown that you feel well, that's what retirement could definitely feel like for you. So what I want you to do is to think about like those healthy ways that you can deal with any emotions that you're finding 
that you have with this retirement or this up and coming retirement. So, you know, things like walking, um, reading, you know, writing, um, you know, you might even try some yoga or some meditation, like there's endless choices that you can actually find when it comes to dealing with emotions. I think the next thing that's really important is flexibility. You know, so you might say, okay, I want to clean all the windows in my house. I want to plan this trip to go to X, Y, Z. But, you know, give yourself that opportunity to really just think about, you know, the things that you might want to do um, and and really experiment and be flexible. So don't go, I have to go at this time. And I think if anything, the last couple of years have taught us is that we need to have a big level of flexibility in our life. So, you know, just work with whatever is happening and, and give yourself that opportunity to experiment with with great things. Like you might have never thought of yourself as being a painter. I know my grandfather, he would never have thought himself a painter, but he went to art classes when he retired and he loved it, absolutely loved it. You would find him getting in his car, driving to all sorts of um, isolated places. He loved the country. And so he would sit there with his sketch pad and he would sketch and, and then he would take photos and then he would come home and paint. Um, when he got home and so yeah painting could be one of those things that you might go hmm never thought that that's something that I might do but maybe I'll give it a go and I think that's really important is you know give things a go be flexible just really really be flexible and always remember that this is about you and not your significant other. If you've got one in your life, okay, it is not about them. So you might have other things that you want to do that they don't want to do. So then it might be your opportunity to find other groups that you can become involved in that has that like-mindedness that you have. So it is always about you and your life. All right, let's talk routine. I think this is the third thing that's really important is that routine, you will have had one right when you worked. Um, life could have gone something like this. Alarm goes off, get out of bed, um, you know, have a drink of water, clean your teeth, go to the bathroom, um, maybe do some exercise, um, you know, have a shower, grab your bag, like eat breakfast, grab your bag, run out the door, and off you go to work and then you know you come home and then you go through that evening routine um, that you had but now you've got all the time in the world to decide what you're going to do with your routine and I know that Alison recently said to me it wasn't until re and she's been retired for quite some time she actually said you know what, I realised, I only just realised that I don't have to do my washing or my housework, you know, on the weekends. That's what I was doing when I worked. And she said, and all of a sudden I went, why am I doing this on the weekends? You know, I, I can be going and spending time with my family that I want to do. Um, instead of doing all this cleaning and mundane stuff, I've got all week to do those things. And it's so true. But what you want to do is you want to find some structure. You want to build some type of uh, routine into your life. So establish something that is important to you. You might go to the local library, as an example, and you know sit there and read the newspaper because they get the newspaper. That's if you like reading the newspaper. You may not. So, But there are absolutely endless choices about what you can do to create a routine and so think about the activities that are going to be important to you particularly from a health perspective so not so much you know sitting down and having morning tea and afternoon tea and having you know the cake and the biggies maybe something new that you might want to do in as part of your routine is actually look at healthier recipes as an example. So you might spend a bit of time doing some baking 
that is very different to how you used to bake. So, and that could be something that you go, okay, I'm going to make one new recipe on a Tuesday for lunch. Entirely up to you what you do with these routines. But what's important is to really, really create some healthy patterns around it. And I think one of the important ones is to do with sleep. So really try and make sure that you are still getting that seven to eight hours sleep. And focus on going to bed at the same time and getting up at the same time. There's a lot of research around that actually says that those sleep times are just as important as the length of time when it comes to sleep. So sleep and recovery is just as important as you creating um, a routine of exercise into your daily life as well too. So think about, okay, what are the healthy things that I'm going to put into this routine of mine? So for me personally, although I'm not retired, um, I get up of a morning and I do my morning yoga. So it's a quick five minute, 10 minute, just depends on the time that I have. And I do that and then I write in my journal and from there I, I move into exercise, an exercise routine or I will run a session with the Strong Healthy Women community. So it's just wide and varying, but it is all about creating um, some type of routine, some habits that are going to be healthier than not. So particularly focus on the sleep because it's one of the things that I've heard a lot from ladies who have retired is that they sit up all night and then what they do is they sleep the day away. And I know my mum has started to do that, you know, and I said to her, you need to get out of the habit. So she's now actually pulling herself up and going to bed at a more reasonable time, which means she's getting up you know, earlier, um, and so she's adopting a much healthier way of sleeping and creating a better pattern for herself. Look, the other thing I think that's important to talk about is social connections as well too. So, you know, really, really thinking about, you had people around you if you worked, you know, in a social environment or out in a space, and you might have you know, develop some great relationships with those people. So reach out to them and, and maybe catch up with them once a month or once every three months. So keep those connections going and look for new ways to create some type of social connection as well too. So lots of places that you could go to do that. Now I know that life is a little different. We are living it online as well too, a lot more. So there are book clubs and there are workouts that you can do online. There, There's even church online, right? And so there are those opportunities to still create social connections online as well as in person. But when you retire, your life can get a little bit smaller. So it's important to find people that have those same views as what you do or even stretch the views that you have. And so go looking for different ways of getting more socially connected. It could be joining a group that plays cards. You know, cards might be something that you like to do. A healthy way of actually creating those social connections is to meet up with people and go for a walk or a hike. Um, or maybe you want to plan a ski trip as well too. So there's lots of different ways. So I want you to think about it. So if you're at that retirement stage, these are just some areas that you can go through and think about, you know, how they might work in your life. Okay. And so the next thing is purpose. Now, I did allude to this when I was talking about Paul, who could have retired many years ago, and he's chosen not to because what happens is he, he loves and enjoys what he does, and it gives him great purpose in life. And so, you know, some of us may never figure out what, what our purpose is in life, but what we can do is find something that brings us that little bit of love and joy. And so it may not be... Uh, work. It could be that you're going to go out and do some volunteer work. You might have 
something that is of interest to you. You might want to give back to the local hospital or the local aged care. Uh, you might want to go, who knows, to a kindy and help out there. I'm not sure whether you can do those things, but just think outside the box. You know, how will you create that purpose in your life and, and what can you do? And one of the great ways of having more purpose in life is to give back. You might even have a passion project. You might have something that you went, this is what I really love doing. And it, you might even start a new career when you retired. You never know. So think about the purpose that you have. All right. So the next thing and the final tip that I have for you is intention. So you have spent your life working and you would have been working to deadlines, right? I know I work to deadlines. I work to do, to do lists. <laughs> okay. And so we've got these projects that we're working on. And so it's no different. It's no different in retirement. So what are the goals that you have? What are the intentions that you have in life? And so think about, you know, what do you want to be able to do? So move your life out 20 years. What are the things that you love and enjoy now that you still want to be doing in 20 years time, 10 years time, five years time, one year? And so you know that a healthy mind, a healthy body, a healthy spirit is really important to you. And so find ways to nurture that. And think about setting some goals around it. And that's what I absolutely loved when I saw that email come through from Alex when I said, you really up leveled your game. Tell me what's going on. And I suspected there were some goals there because I know for myself, when I have a goal, I work towards it. I really, really do try really hard to stay on top of whatever it is. Now, one of the things that uh, I have available if you're looking to set some goals is my goal getting and habit stacking guide. There it is there. And so one of the things is we break it down into your top 12, which are what's important to me this month and next month and the month after. And so here I am. This is the week I'm in now. And so this is my goal. And so it's pretty simple. You just actually go, well, this is what I'm going to work on and be really specific. It might be something you're going to do one day a week. It might be something three days a week. It could be every day. But why is it important to you? Always have the why. Okay, always find that why. So I'll put a link up today as well too so you can go and actually grab a copy of that and, and start working on your goals if it's something that you want to do. And you don't necessarily have to be retired to do that. So we have been talking about is retirement good or bad for your health? It really comes down to thinking about what's important to you during your retirement. So go through your emotions, your excitement and your sad bits that are, and, and really think about healthy ways to deal with that. Think about being flexible in your life. And I think we've all learned to be very flexible over the last couple of years. Create some type of routine because you're used to having a routine with work. So you want to create that routine now in retirement. You want to make sure that you've got a purpose or that you've got some level of direction in life. So, you know, and one of the great ways to do that is to give back or to find some type of passion project. And then finally, make sure you have an intention. So intention is thinking about what goals do I want? And I'm going to put that guide up. So you've been listening to Peter from Strong Healthy Women. I hope that's given you something to think about. And, you know, there's some great tips in there, even if you aren't retired. But really think about the things that you're doing with retirement. Are they healthy or they're unhealthy? And if they're unhealthy, they're probably going to take you a step or two away from what it is that you want to keep doing in your life. And that's what's important, is that for each and every one of us, that we are able to do the things that we love and enjoy with the people who are important to us.
So over and out from me, have a fantastic day and I will see you all soon. Mwah. Take care.